All right, oil light shows that I've got power to the dash. Glow plugs are preheated. Nothing. Not even a click in the starter solenoid. Hey folks, welcome back to Abundant Life Homestead. Just a few days ago, most of the United States was dealing with an Arctic blast with temperatures that were lower than most of us have felt in the last decade anyway. And I came out on the coldest of those mornings to fire up the trucks and the tractors to see how each of them would do. Unfortunately, that morning, the old Kubota didn't even try. It's kind of disappointing, and it really left me perplexed because I thought I did everything right. I went through all the preparations that I had mentioned in a previous video. I had taken my battery in the house to keep it warm. I got good winterized fuel in the tank. I've got a wintertime oil in the crankcase. I was blowing hot air into the air box. I had already inspected my glow plugs. They were working. I was getting good dash lights. Everything seemed fine right up to the point that I tried to engage the starter. It is apparently too cold for the starter to even try. Now over the years I've dealt with frozen fuel, I've dealt with frozen batteries, I've dealt with stuck starters in the winter time. Although I've never had it happen, I assumed at that point that it was just so cold that the solenoid had locked up on the starter. That's why I wasn't getting any engagement. But now, it's been at or above freezing for a couple days now, still getting no response. We've got a big problem. So follow along with me today. I'm going to try to diagnose this starter system from the battery all the way to the solenoid. We'll figure out exactly what's going on here. And that way, if we need to order anything, we don't just willy-nilly buy parts that we didn't need. Okay, best place to start a job like this is in the electrical schematics. You can see we got the battery here. Positive power comes off the battery. Goes to the main lug at the starter, also branches off. We got a red wire, comes up through the harness connector, comes into the switch at terminal number 30 on the back. When the switch is in the start position, powers terminal number 50. Comes down here on a black and white wire, it's got a disconnect. Comes down, it's got another disconnect, it goes to the safety switch. If the safety switch is activated, sends out power, has a disc disconnect there, comes to the switch side of the starter solenoid. So let's go back. We're going to start at the battery and work our way through. Okay, at the battery, I'm going to take my multimeter. I'm going to take the black probe. I'm going to clip it to the negative terminal on the battery. Turn to 20 volts DC. So we're going to check the battery here with the red probe onto the positive. 13.2. That's a little high, but uh, it's warming up very quick out here. That tends to happen. I've already taken my gloves off. I'm about to take my hat off. Yep, battery's warming up. We're just a little over 13. We're still safe there. Now we got to get into the switches back here. All right, let's see if we can get down here without and see it without having to remove the battery. Down here is our ignition switch and these wires right here, that terminal, that is terminal number 30. It's one where battery power comes in. We're going to test that terminal. It should always have a hot 12 volts. If it doesn't, then we'll go back and check the wire that leads up to it. Turn this back on 20 volts DC. I'm just going to reach down in there, put the probe on that terminal. There we go. Same 13.1 that we're getting off the battery. So we got power going to the switch correctly. Let's come back up here. Back behind here again. This terminal right here. It's the one that's pretty much straight up, about the 12 o'clock position. That is your starter wire. 
and we should have no voltage coming to that and then when I hold the key we should have a full 12 volts coming to that. Alright, I think you've got this propped where you can see what's going on with the meter anyway. Get up under here. Hold the probe. No voltage. Turn the key. I should have 12 volts. I've got 8.87. That shouldn't be. Try it again. Okay, so I just made a little mistake for which I'm actually kind of thankful for. I went to do a second take on this test just to double check and see if what I was getting on camera is what I was actually getting. I accidentally held the probe to the wrong terminal on the switch on the second time around. I put it on 19, which goes to my glow plugs, and I turned the switch to start. I'm getting that same around 8 eight volts going to my glow plugs that's not supposed to happen so just to double check I go back to 30 which is the starter circuit and take it off put it back on my glow plugs that is not supposed to happen at all that means my glow plugs are engaged while I'm trying to start this switch is bad Let's go see if we can confirm that in the workshop manual. Okay, in the workshop manual, we've got several small schematics that show what happens, what gets powered when you do, when you make different actions. On this one, for your glow plug heating circuit, when you engage your glow plugs, you can follow all the lines and arrows, and you see that when, when you have the key turned, you're getting your power in, and power is only going out through the glow plug circuit and the glow plug indicator to your glow plugs. Starter operating circuit with clutch depressed right below it. You follow the lines on that and you see that the only thing getting power then is your starter circuit. You're not getting power to your glow plugs at that point. See here it shows the glow plugs the power going out and here it shows they're just grounded. So, we're leaching power into our glow plugs while we're trying to start. It's definitely not supposed to happen. If it were, we'd be, they would require a much bigger battery in this tractor so that we could get 12 volts at both. But if these are drawing full power while we're trying to start, that may explain why my starter's getting nothing. I'm going to go order a new switch before we continue. All right, so now I know that my key switch is shorted out. But I also know that if you came to this video because you're having similar issues with your starter, your solution may not be the same as mine. It could be something else down the line. So what I've done, I went in the back of the key switch, I disconnected all the glow plug circuits. Now, when I turn the key, I'm getting 12 volts to the starting circuit. For your benefit and for the sake of this video, we're going to continue on with the diagnosis just as if the key switch was fine and we should show full vo voltage all the way through as we go. Okay, the next stop on the schematic past the switch is your disconnect. You're going to find that under the right side of your dash panel. You've usually got the fuses for your lights here. Those are mine that I replaced. You've got this wiring harness connector, and then you've got this black and white wire on a disconnect. This black and white wire is your starting circuit. Let's pull that disconnect apart. I've got the multimeter connected to the negative terminal of the battery. 20 volts DC. I'm going to go to the switch side of that connector we just pulled apart. Hold the positive probe to it. Turn the key. 
dropping quickly. And yeah, it's been a couple hours. My battery is stabilized after the initial temperature warm up today, but uh, I don't like how fast that started dropping there. Do that again. Yep, right at 12, 11.9. We're losing juice quickly. I know my battery is not in the best shape either. So with this disconnect, if you're lucky, that was just loose and that's that's your only problem. If you check this and you got 12 volts at the back of your switch but you have less here, then you've got a problem in this wire. You need to dig it out, replace it. But we got 12 volts there, let's put it back together. Okay, so our next stop is another disconnect that's right at our safety switch. Safety switch is right here on the left-hand side of the tractor. You've got your clutch pedal. Lever moves the clutch pedal into the safety switch. Wiring for the safety switch is back here behind the toolbox door. If we pull those out, we have two disconnects here. Let's see if i got enough slack to get to these. Now, I don't know... I don't know if I can get those on camera and test them at the same time or not. We'll try. All right, I'm not going to get the multimeter on camera here, so you'll just have to trust me. Look up in here. One of these two is going to come from the key switch and should give us... 12 volts. It is this one. And now I'm reading 11.9, dropping quickly. 11.88. Yeah. Okay. So despite my weak battery, I'm getting full voltage to the safety switch. Now we'll plug one of these in. Let's see. If this is the one going. On that side. Okay. Now. So now I'm going to put my probe in the other side of the switch. We'll hold that together. I'll depress the clutch with my knee. Turn the key. And I'm showing 11.4, 11.37. Yep. I'm getting full voltage, even though I'm dropping quickly. So, we can plug that back in. Okay, last but not least is the starter solenoid. The wire going into it, you can see the white and black wire down in there. And if we can get a flashlight shining at it, you may be able to tell it's on a blade connector that is behind and under the main lug there. We've got to pull that wire off. <clears throat> We've got to pull that connector, test that wire. That'll tell us if our solenoid is indeed getting 12 volts. I'm not going to be able to show it on camera. You'll just have to trust me that it is. So that takes us all the way to the starter solenoid. If we know we're getting power to the solenoid and we still don't have any kind of click, no kind of start, we can start to assume that the solenoid itself might be bad and you've got to replace the whole starter and solenoid assembly together. However, I got to thinking while I was doing all this, I know my battery is getting weak. I mentioned it a few times lately and it, is, it also got overcharged in the days before my extreme cold weather prep video and I wondered what kind of damage it might have done then. I think that may be what shorted out my switch. 
but also I'm starting to think my battery may be entirely shot. So watching it go down while I was taking just a little bit of power out of it, I want to go ahead and test it again, see what it's saying now for voltage. 11.8, uh, so it came up a little bit with the key off. But let's see, I haven't tried this yet, let's see if it'll even try to turn over. Let me disconnect the multimeter. Let's see if it'll even try to turn over without that uh, glow plug circuit leeching the power. See, I got a click there, and now nothing again. I've got a feeling Like I said, I think this battery's about shot. Yep, now we're showing 10.8, full volt lower than we were a minute ago. <laughs> I turn the key, I've got no click, and this drops down to two volts. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this battery's done. It can tell us it has 12 volts or near 12 volts or between 11 and 13 all day long, but I can make a 12 volt battery pack out of eight double A's and it's not even gonna to attempt to start this tractor. If the battery's lost its capacity, can't push the current anymore, we'd never know it because I don't have the tools to test that here. I do have an idea though. Okay, so I put my battery on the charger for quite a while. It showed 0%. It still comes back up to where it's saying 12 volts, but it's lost all of its push. So I'm not going to get this to turn over for anything today. If you go through and check all your circuits like we did today, good idea to get your battery checked before you, get, before you replace your starter. Because the battery is going to be a little cheaper than a starter. Hope you don't have to replace the starter itself. I don't think I'm gonna have to. I know my battery's bad. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully I helped you diagnose issues in your own starting system. If I did help, or if you just found yourself making it this far in the video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe from you. Until next time, keep on nourishing your dreams, cultivating your passions, embracing the beauty of God's creation. Hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. We'll see you then. And hopefully we have a starter switch and a battery by then.